The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Distance Education. I am Gembo Pamela Ancho, your citizenship education teacher in the class of Form 4. Before we move to our lesson of today, we shall look at the correction to the assignment. The task was read on the evolution of the Cameroon Constitution and write down five constitution and uh, write down five provisions of the 1961 Constitution. That was the first task. Read on the evolution of the Cameroon Constitution and write down five provisions of the 1961 Constitution. And the second task, state the years that Cameroon experienced constitutional changes. State the years Cameroon experienced constitutional changes. So let's look at the correction. The, the answer to the first, the provisions in the Cameroon Constitution. We have the Constitution set up a federal government. That is the 1961 Constitution set up a federal government. Another provision, it, it, it created two federated states. And the third provision was that it set up a federal house of house of 50 members. So the federal house was made up of 50 members. And the fourth provision, it created, it instituted bilingualism. So the institution of bilingualism was one of the provisions of the 1961 Constitution. And a fifth provision was that the CFA franc was adopted as the currency of the federal government, or was adopted as the currency of the Federal Republic of Cameroon. And the second task was state the years that Cameroon experienced constitutional changes. Take note, the years is in plural. State the years that Cameroon experienced constitutional changes. The first, we have 1961, when they adopted the federal constitution, 1972, when they adopted the unitary constitution, 1984, when there were constitutional amendments and the 1996 constitution. With that said, let's move to our lesson of today, which is lesson number seven. And the title of our lesson, The Evolution of the Cameroon Constitution, 1961 to 1983. So you write down the lesson number, lesson number seven, the title of the lesson, The Evolution of the Cameroon Constitution, 1961 to 1983. And this is the plan of our lesson. We shall begin with the previous knowledge, learning objectives, real life situation, we'll carry out learning activities and application exercises, and we shall separate with an assignment to prepare us for 
the next lesson. So with that said, let's consider the previous knowledge, what you already know that will help you to build on in this lesson of today. Learners have knowledge on the constitution of Cameroon. They, 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 state, they can state some articles of the constitution and some of our learners belong to associations that have constitutions. So the constitution, the idea of the constitution is real because in our student associations, we have constitutions. Even in family meetings, we have constitution. In quarter reunions, we have constitutions. So the idea of constitution is not new. At the end of this lesson, it is expected that each learner should state the changes made in the Cameroon constitution. So you take note, at the end of the lesson, you should be able to state the changes made in the constitution of Cameroon and also give reasons why these changes were made. Now let's consider this situation in real life. Many people usually get punished because, the, the violation, because of the violation of rules and regulations of the society to which they belong. Let's reflect over it. Many people usually get punished because of the violation of rules and regulations of the society to which they belong. That's violation of school rules, violation of community rules. Now, why do you, why do constituted societies and groups need governing laws? Take note of this question. Why do constituted societies and groups need governing laws? And the second question, for what reasons are these laws often subjected to review? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to provide answers to these questions. Now, let us enter into our lesson by considering this document. It is titled Document 1. And we find information written how nice it is, it is to meet our brothers. How nice it is to meet our brothers. And below, Vive le Cameroun Unifié. And we find people seated with documents in, it's as if it's a conference room. So let, let us look at the questions that will help us to explore the document. Question one, identify the picture shown in the document, in document one above. Identify the picture shown in document one above. Question number two, list the elements you can see in the picture. So let's go back to our picture in order to identify this picture. When we look at this picture, the information may guide us how nice it is to meet our brothers. Vive le Cameroun unifié. Meeting our brothers, Vive le Cameroun unifié, is carrying information leading us to reunification. So let's look at the answer. People on a round table discussion. So this picture is people on a round table discussion. And the second question says, list the elements you can see in the picture. When we look at this picture, what can we see on the picture? The things we see on this picture, we find many people dressed in different attire, working documents in front of each participant, inscription on the wall, expressing the joy of being together. So these are some of the features that we can identify on this picture. Now, let's look at the 1961 Constitution. The 1961 Constitution. We shall start by considering the events leading to 
the constitution. What actually constitutes the background of this constitution? This constitution came in as a result of the reunification of French and British Cameroons following the plebiscite of 11 February 1961. So the constitution was to govern these two entities that were reunified as a result of the plebiscite of 11th of February 1961. Another event was the Fumba Constitutional Conference that met from 17 to the 21st of July 1961. This conference was attended by delegates from the two territories, that is from British Cameroons and from French Cameroons. So during this, during this constitutional consultation, they came up with some provisions that were now in that were now drafted into the 1961 constitution. Let's consider the provisions of the 1961 constitutions. What were the main provisions? What did it actually include? If the 1961 constitution the first provision was the creation of a federal government with the capital in Yaoundé. The federal government, that was a government that was above that of the federated state. There was a government in East Cameroon, a government in West Cameroon. But the federal government that was to manage these two governments had its capital in Yaoundé. Another provision was that he created the, the, the post of president and that of vice president. The president was to be assisted by a vice president. The 1961 constitution equally created a bicameral legislature in West Cameroon because West Cameroon had their house of chiefs and they equally had their own house of parliament. And another provision was that English and French were adopted as official languages in the Federal Republic of Cameroon. And the fourth, prov the fifth provision was that the flag of Cameroon was adopted to be green, red, and yellow with two gold stars on the green color. You take note of it, the, the flag of the 1961 constitution was made up of green, red, and yellow stripe with two gold stars on the green color. Today we have one gold star on the red color. So you should be able to make a distinction to differentiate between the 1961 flag and the flag of 1996, the one that was adopted by the 1996 or 1972 constitution. Another provision was that the motto of Cameroon was adopted to be peace, work, fatherland. So the motto of Cameroon was adopted by the 1961 constitution. And this motto was, this motto was represented by this phrase, peace, work, fatherland. And another provision was a federal assembly of 50 members with a 40 to 10 ratio that was put in place and 40 it means 40 of the members of the federal assembly were to come from east cameroon while 10 were to come from west cameroon the cfa was equally adopted as official currency and the tenth provision was that the bicameral the by bi, the by judicial system was adopted where the English common law and the French common law were all enacted into the constitution. It means the English common law was to be used in the state of West Cameroon, while the French, common, while the French civil law was to be used in the state of East Cameroon. So the bi, the bi system meant that the English common law was used in the former British Cameroons, while the French civil law was used in the former French Cameroon. Now let's look at this document. Observe this document. It's titled Document 2. 
it is titled Document 2. And we find some very wonderful architectural work there. So let's look at the questions to help us explore the document. Question 1. Identify the two major works of art on the picture. Question 2. What code name is usually given to the picture? Question 3. Where in Cameroon do we find the image in the picture? Question 4. What does the image symbolize? If we let's get back to the document so that we can start answering our question, identifying the two major works of art on the picture. When we look at the picture, two major works of art. We find this a major work of art, and this is another major work of art. What are they? A man carrying children and round tower that narrows from top to bottom. So we find here a man carrying children, and we find a tower that narrows from top to bottom. And the second question says, what code name is usually given to the picture? This picture, what code name is usually given to it? This picture is usually called the reunification monument. So anywhere in Cameroon where you will see this picture, you, it is the reunification monument. And the third question, where in Cameroon do we find the image in the picture? Where in Cameroon do we find this image? This image, where can we find it in Cameroon? This image is found in Yaoundé, at the military, just at the entrance to the military headquarters. And the fourth question, what does the image symbolize? What does the image symbolize? This, this image symbolizes love, concern, and unity in a family. If we look at the image, it symbolizes love, concern, and unity. A man carrying children. And we find this Toa. A Toa is a sign of unity. Now let's move to document three. The 1972 referendum question. Let's read it together. Do you approve with a view to consolidating national unity and accelerating the economic social and cultural development of the nation, the draft constitution submitted to the people of Cameroon by the President of the Republic of Cameroon and instituting a republic, one and indivisible, to be styled the United Republic of Cameroon. Now let's move to our questions before we come back to the document. Question one. What are the two possible options from which the electorate has to choose in case of a referendum? What are the two possible options from which the electorate has to choose in case of a referendum? Question two, identify two major benefits mentioned in the above question that can easily motivate the electorate to vote in favor of the proposal. Let's read the document again. Do you approve with a view to consolidating national unity and accelerating the economic, social, and cultural development of the nation, the draft constitution submitted to the people of Cameroon by the President of the Republic of Cameroon and instituting a republic, one and indivisible, to be styled the reunited Republic of Cameroon. So what are the two possible options from which the electorate had to choose in case of a referendum? The two possible were yes or no. So they were either to respond by a yes or a no. 
And the next question identify two major benefits mentioned in the above question that can easily motivate the electorate to vote in favor of the proposal. If we look at it, they say consolidation of national unity. It's, it was a benefit that was proposed in the document. Accelerating, uh, acceleration of economic, social, and cultural development. That was another benefit that was equally mentioned in the document. Now let's move to the 1972 Unitary Constitution. Events leading to the Constitution. This 1972 Unitary Constitution was preceded by, by the approval of the idea of a unitary state by the federal parliament. So the federal parliament accepted or approved the idea of a unitary state. And another was that a federal a referendum was organized on 20th May 1972, where the people were to choose the options of the questions we saw above in favor of the, a unitary state or against a unitary state. Another, the, uh, another uh, step was that there was the majority vote. When the referendum was organized, there was a majority vote in favor of a unitary state. And with this majority vote, it now led to the revision of the federal constitution of 1961. And it was then promulgated into the unitary constitution by law, by the law of 2nd June 1972. So these were the steps that preceded, before, that acted as a stepping stone to the introduction of a unitary constitution in Cameroon. So the, the, the federal uh, parliament had to approve it before it was, the, the referendum was organized, which Cameroonians, uh, the, in the, a majority of Cameroonians voted in favor of a unitary state and the federal constitution was now replaced with a unitary constitution by the law of 2nd June 1972. Let's look at the provisions of the 1972 constitution. As we analyze the provisions, take note the changes between the provisions of the 1961 constitution and those of the 1972 constitution. The first provision was the change of name from Federal Republic to United Republic of Cameroon. The 1961 constitution gave the name Coint Cameroon as the Federal Republic of Cameroon. The 1972 constitution changed the name from Federal Republic to United Republic of Cameroon. Another provision was the abolition of the two federated states, the state of East Cameroon and the state of West Cameroon. Both were abolished. And it, led, it also led to the creation of seven provinces out of the two federated states. Seven provinces were created, headed by governors. And another provision was the abolition of the post of vice president that was introduced by the 1961 constitution. The post of a vice president was abolished. Equally, a single national assembly of 120 members was introduced in the 1972 constitution. And the speaker of the assembly was to succeed the president in case of vacancy. And a single star on the red color of the flag replaced the two golden stars on the green stripe of the flag. And the, uh, the House of Chiefs that it was created in West Cameroon was equally abolished by the 1972 Constitution. Now let's look at the constitutional amendments of the 1972 constitutions. 
when this constitution was introduced in 1972. By, 1980, by 1996, when the 96 constitution was coming, was, was put in place, many changes had taken place in the 1972 constitution. The first amendment was in 1975, when the post of prime minister was introduced. Remember that the 1972 constitution abolished the post of vice president that was created in 1961. In 1975, the post of prime minister was introduced. And in 1979, the prime minister was to succeed the president in case of vacancy. It was no longer the Speaker of the National House of Assembly to succeed the President in case of vacancy, but it was the Prime Minister to succeed the President in case of vacancy. And in 1983, the amendments of 1983 they introduced the possibility of multiple candidates in the presidential elections. So many, this was an the introduction of democracy into the constitution of Cameroon. Multiple candidates were accepted in presidential elections. Another amendment of 1983 consisted of increasing the number of provinces from seven to ten. And so the, the seven provinces were again partitioned and Cameroon now be, was made up of 10 provinces. And equally in the 1983, another amendment increased the number of parliamentarians, that's the number of seats in parliament, were increased from 120 to 180. So these are the amendments that we made on the 1972, in the 1972 constitution. There was amendment of 1975, 1979, and 1983. Now let us look at this application exercise. You read with me, state four provisions of the federal constitution of 1961 that were not altered by the unitary constitution of 1972. State for provisions of the Federal Constitution of 1961 that were not altered by the Unitary Constitution of 1972. Let's look at the provisions that were not altered. The first, the motto was renamed Peace, Work, Fatherland. So it did not change. This phrase, Peace, Work, Fatherland, did not change. Another provision that was not altered, English and French remained official languages in the, uni, in the unitary state. And, and Yaoundé also remained the national capital. And the, the CFA franc remained the official currency. So no, these are the provisions that remained the same in the 1961 constitution and in the 1972 constitution. Task two, what events prepared the ground for the introduction of a new constitution in 1972 in Cameroon? What events prepared the ground for the introduction of a new constitution in 1972 in Cameroon? These are the events approval of the idea of a unitary state by the federal parliament. A referendum organized on 20th May 1972. Majority vote in favor of a unitary state. The revision of the federal constitution of 1961. The promulgation of the unitary constitution into law number second into, law, into the law on 2nd June 1972. So these are the events that precipitated or that prepared the grounds for the 1972 constitution in Cameroon. This is the assignment you will do in preparation for next class. 
read on the constitution of 1984 and 1996 and write down five changes introduced. Read on the constitutions of 1984 and 1996 and write down five changes introduced. You may consult these textbooks in order to do help you do the assignment. With that said, let us we've come to the end of our lesson on the evolution of the Cameroon Constitution, 1961 to 1983. Our next lesson will focus on the 1984 and 1996 Constitution. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.